the 1970s, the Atlanta Braves weren't that great. They didn't win much at all and didn't have many recognizable stars, save for two-time MVP Dale Murphy. The most famous person related to the team was the owner, Ted Turner of CNN. Thanks to his money, things started to improve, and in the early 80s, the Braves even had themselves a couple of division-winning seasons. Part of that uptick was thanks to a flamboyant pitcher, one of the greatest characters of a generation, Pascual Perez. Pascual Perez came from the Dominican Republic, and he had a flair to let you know it. He annoyed opposing teams with his antics, most famously shooting finger guns at opposing batters. He would celebrate inning-ending strikeouts by sprinting to the dugout, jerry curls bouncing out of his hat, gold chains swinging on his chest. But for all this fun, and despite his legitimately being a major league all-star on the field, it's probably not what he's best known for. Now, let's be fair to Pasquale. He was an immigrant living in a country whose language was different than that of his native tongue. Put yourself in his shoes, that's pretty confusing. Now, let's add on top of that, that let's say because of your rather odd work schedule, you're only in the city you live in about 50% of the time. And that city is kind of notorious for having roads that don't exactly make sense. You're not exactly set up for success at navigation, are you? There is no grid system to speak of, streets randomly change names passing through intersections, and the main artery interstates run north and south, combining for a few miles to split the city right in half because reasons. However, the most famous road to not reference a plant that grows a fruit actually goes north and south, and east and west. Interstate 285 is a ring road. It runs in a circle around Atlanta with a circumference of about 60 miles. We call it the perimeter. If you've driven in Atlanta, you've probably used it to drive around Atlanta. Nowadays, the Braves actually play right outside of 285. In 1982, the Braves played in downtown, right about the middle point of the circle 285 makes around the city. In 1982, Pasquale got his driver's license. So in 1982, Pasquale drove on 285. It's August 19th, 1982. The Braves are having a really good season, but had been in a bit of a slump recently. They're playing the Montreal Expos, and our super fun friend Pasquale is pitching for the Braves. Or, well, he's supposed to. So I said, Pasquale drove on 285. What that means is, Pasquale's driving on 285. So here's what happened. He was driving this car that had like a really nice radio. And he was like really digging whatever tune was on it. And so he missed his exit. And now he really has no idea where to go. And on top of all of that, he forgot his wallet. So, uh-oh. He's driven around 285 two full times now and is working on the third. Remember how I mentioned it's about 60 miles to make one lap? Well, that's almost 180 miles on whatever gas guzzler I'm sure the early 80s had him driving. So he pulls over, finds a gas station, and just asks the clerk for $10 worth of gas, hoping for a favor. Turns out he gets one. The clerk recognizes him and tells him they're looking for you at the stadium. The clerk helps him get directions there, and Pasquale hurries to the stadium, feeling awful, scared he's going to get cut from the team. He shows up about 10 minutes after the game starts. The Braves actually ended up winning that game against the Expos, 5-4, and Pasquale only got a small fine when he explained what happened. Thankfully, Pasquale was a pretty fun guy, and so he was a good sport about it all. He played the rest of his career with the nickname Perimeter Pasquale, and even wore a jacket with I-285 on it in big shiny letters for a while. Everyone has a story about driving on 285, whether it's the awful traffic, just going the wrong way, or in this case, just going and going and going. Atlanta's kind of weird, but that's part of what makes Atlanta great. <laughs>